Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today we are going to look at the synthesis where we are going to start from ethyl benzene and we are going to make one phenyl acetone as a product. And jumping into my retrosynthetic analysis right away, the very first thing that I am seeing immediately is that I will have to end up making a new carbon carbon bond because my final product is one carbon longer than my starting material. And when it comes to the carbon carbon bond formation, within the scope of the regular organic chemistry course in the first semester we have learned two major techniques. We can do it via the Grignier reaction or we can do it via alkynide or acetylenide ions. Which one is going to be the key step in this particular synthesis? Well, I don't know, it depends on how we want to do it. So let's look at our other functional group that we have here, this ketone, and think how we can possibly make a ketone. One way of synthesizing our ketone would require a corresponding alcohol. So if I have a secondary alcohol that looks like this, I can easily oxidize that to my corresponding ketone. Another possibility that we know, we can do the hydration or hydroboration oxidation of a triple bond and that also gives us a ketone. So if I have a predecessor alkyne like this one, I can do the hydroboration oxidation reaction which would put an oxygen onto the carbon away from the phenyl ring, giving me, after the ketoenol dimerization, of course, a ketone that we are looking for. So that means that we can either use a green yard to make the purple alcohol or we can use acetylenide ions to make our green alkyne. Well, let's look at both of those a little bit more and see which method may be more efficient than the other one. I will start with my green alkyne. So to make that one, I would have to start with the terminal alkyne. So essentially I'm looking at creating this carbon-carbon bond over here, which means that my terminal alkyne predecessor would have to look like this, which can be easily synthesized from my starting material in four steps. Now, when it comes to my purple alcohol, well, that guy can be a product of the Grignier reaction, where I would have to use this aldehyde to react with methyl magnesium bromide to get me the alcohol. And this aldehyde can be synthesized either from the alkyne, so we are going back into the green branch, or alternatively I can synthesize it from the terminal alcohol, which in turn can be made from the green alkene, so again we are going to go into the green branch here. So when it comes to the efficiency of my steps, I have one, two, three, four, five, and six steps no matter which direction I'm going to go. So from the efficiency perspective, that actually means that it really doesn't matter which method we are going to choose, they all are pretty much the same when it comes to the number of steps, so it really doesn't matter. So since we can choose, I'm going to go with the green branch all the way. So step number one is going to be radical halogenation. I'm going to use Br2 and light, which is going to give me the corresponding bromide, so instead of X, I'm going to show my Br. Next, we are going to do the elimination reaction to make our alkene. Since there is only one choice of what kind of alkene we can make here, the choice of our base here is irrelevant, but I am going to use the terbutoxide, something like potassium terbutoxide, just because I like it. Next, we are going to do the halogenation to add two axes to our alkene, so for that one I'm going to just use simple halogenation with bromine, so I'm just going to react our molecule with Br2, which is going to give me the corresponding dibromide. The next thing that I'm going to do, I need to do a double elimination to get the triple bond. So I'm going to use excess of a strong base, something like sodium amide, followed by the aqueous workup to neutralize my basic reagent. Then we are going to add our methyl group. We are going to do so by first treating our alkyne with sodium amide to deprotonate our terminal alkyne. And then I'm going to treat that with CH3I, methyl iodide, and do a simple SN2 reaction to add that methyl group to my alkyne. And here you might be wondering why am I taking the sodium amide and doing my reaction twice, why not just combine those two steps and use three or maybe four equivalents of sodium amide and just do the elimination and the deprotonation all in the same step and kill two birds with the same stone. Well, the problem here is that sodium amide can be nucleophilic. The co-product in this reaction 
reaction is going to be ammonia, which is also nucleophilic, and all of those guys are going to be killing your CH3I, which means that if I want to use the excess of sodium amide and just kill two birds with the same stone, so to speak, I'm going to have to use a ton more of CH3I, and that would be just a waste of a reagent in this case. But in some cases, that can definitely be a benefit when you can combine multiple steps into one, so that will save you a lot of time in the lab. Anyways, coming back to my synthesis here, the last step that I have here is the conversion of my alkyne to my corresponding ketone, which we are going to do by using a bulky borane something like 9-BBN, or maybe you can use disimyl borane or disyclohexyl borane, something of that sort that's going to be extremely sensitive towards any kind of steric hindrances, and then of course we are going to follow that up with the oxidation step uh, with hydrogen peroxide in basic media that's going to initially form the corresponding enol, which will then quickly undergo keto-enol tautomerization and give us ketone as our final product. And there you have it. For some extra practice, I do encourage you to write out all the reagents for the rest of the synthesis using other branches and see if you remember every step there as well. Other than that, that's all I have for you today, guys. If you like this video and learned something new today, hit the like button to help promote this video and help more students see it. Thank you for watching till the very end. Subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates. Watch this video next and I will see you tomorrow.